and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. You know this verse 21, I'm going to have a meeting with all husbands before the end of this year. And I will teach them how to be the man at the gate. So, but that's not for today. 22, and the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. 23, and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Pay attention to this reading. 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. And all, sorry, all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's hill, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she when she uh, when she bare them. Twenty seven. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Twenty nine. And Jacob sought Pothage, and Esau came from the field, and he, he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, oh, I've, I've gone beyond the reading for today. I'm to stop at 27, sorry. 27. Let me take 27 again. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Let's go back to verse 22 again. Let's look at verse 22 again. Are you said, and the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why, why if it be so, why am I tossed? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Pay attention to this. Look at verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger now i want to emphasize that word and she went to inquire of the lord and she went to inquire of the lord now she went to find out when she was already pregnant she didn't know what was happening she was just having these uh, issues with her stomach it's like some people were playing football inside her stomach you know and the way she was feeling, it was not a, it was not days when there was an uh, ultrasound machine where you go to the hospital, they will check scan and tell you the number of babies in your womb and what's going on in your... Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, she had to go to God and God said to her, pay attention to the prophecy, and God said to her, two nations are in thy womb. And listen, the elder will serve the younger. Now, in bracket, you know what I call this? Look up, everybody. This is what is called destiny. Now, I told us that today we are going to start with the purpose of God. And we are going to pray. When, it, when we get to that point, you will be praying for the purpose of God for your life. Now, the prophecy was spoken never before they were born. Two nations are in your womb. The younger one will be greater than the elder. The, it will be so great that the elder one will have to serve him. Now, these things were said ever before they were born. And as the woman will give birth, she gave birth to two sons. Praise the Lord. And the, the first one that came, the Bible calls him, they call him Esau. The second one that came, no wonder the mother had to love him because she was the one that had the prophecy. Now, can you imagine that the future of these children were de de determined ever before they were, they were born? So can I tell you this truth? Tonight I have three questions I'm going to answer. Is there anything like destiny? We are going to look at it in our study before we begin to pray. So, the destiny of these children were decided, were spoken about ever before they were born. Now, and I say in my notes, this is what destiny is. Now, destiny is what has been determined in advance. Destiny is what? What has been determined in advance. Which means, tomorrow, by this time, by four o'clock, so, so and so thing will happen. That's what destiny is, what has been determined in advance. And I also say here, can, we can also call it fixed order of things. Being conscious, law. 
Now, we all know that in our church, there are some, certain things that are fixed. Hello? That will say, okay, who is so-so-and-so now? What is going on so-so-and-so time? We all know that in our church, nothing changes our, our communion service from Wednesday. Praise the Lord. It will be strange if something else happened. That's what we call destiny. Every one of us that are born, understand it. You are, you are not a mistake. You are not an error. You should understand that there is a plan. There is a purpose in the mind of God before he allowed you to come to the earth. Shout it aloud. I'm not, a, I'm not a mistake. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Say it, but I can only hear Tommy's voice. I'm not hearing the adults. Say, I'm, I'm not a mistake. Hallelujah. So there's what we call destiny, which we are going to explain. Now, I wrote here again. The future of Jacob was announced to his mother in prophecy. And I ask a question. Is there anything called destiny? Because that's one thing so many will be thinking right now. That, Pastor, are you sure there's anything called destiny? I'm ready for you to answer some of your questions because I've packaged my message in form of question. Before Jacob was born, he was spoken about. Now, and listen, the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. Now, he does not do for one what he will not do for all. Every one of us should understand that there's a purpose of God for our life. So let's answer the question. Is there anything called destiny? And boldly, I will tell you, yes. Let's look at three scriptures or four as we go on. In Romans chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, look at what Paul the Apostle said about himself. Romans chapter 1, from verse 1 and verse 2. Thank you. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, called to be an apostle, separated, which he had promised our for by his prophets. Now, ever before he was born, there was prophecy that somebody is going to come. He's going to preach this particular gospel. Paul, an apostle that was prophesied about by his prophet in holy scriptures. There is destiny. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 1, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 3 to verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 1. And it came to pass in those days. Uh, it came to pass in those, in those days of Joachim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month, verse four. That then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, "What did the word of the Lord say? Before I formed thee, everybody say before I, before I formed thee, before I formed thee in the belly, I what I knew thee." And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet ever before you were born. God said in my heart, as they were forming, as you we were forming in your mother's womb, I determined that this one that is coming is not going to be a mechanic. He's not going to be an engineer. He's not going to be a doctor. He's going to be what? A prophet. The word destiny is real. I come again. Destiny is real. I want you to understand it. There is a purpose of God. Who determines destiny? We are not yet through with that scripture. God determines destiny. That's why I've always told every one of us. There's the plan of God over everybody's life. There's the plan of the devil over everybody's life. And do you know at times there are plans of our parents over our life. And at times too, we have plans that does not tally with the plan of God for our life. But there is a plan of God. But you should know the God we serve. It does not. Okay, we, are, we have not gotten there. Verse 5. So before I form the. Now show me verse 6. We we'll stop at verse 6. Let's stop at verse 6. So we can go to the other side. Then said I, Ha, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, which means he himself, as at the time God was speaking to him, did not know what he was called to become. So, is, Pastor, is it possible for me not to know my destiny? Yes! And I will tell you why. He said, but I cannot speak. Ah, for I'm a child. How old am I? I cannot speak. Lord, I cannot speak. There's this plan of God over every man's life. Let's take one more scripture. Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah. Okay, we, we take, ah, we still have some scripture. Do, not, don't take Jeremiah first. Take Acts of Apostles 9. Acts 9, 15 and 16. Acts 9, 15 and 16. Thank you. He said, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, 
For he is a chosen vessel unto me. He's still speaking about Paul here. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. A chosen vessel. Verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16. For I will what? Show him how great things he must suffer. God is still talking about the future. It's not something he's, going, he's facing right now. It's not that I'll show him what he's facing. I will show him what he will, feel, he will suffer in on this path. Say destiny. I didn't hear you. What he must, great things he must suffer. Yes, he must suffer for my name's sake. Now, you know why I'm bringing all these scriptures up? For you to understand that there's a purpose of God. There's something God has written concerning you before you, were, before you came to the earth. You are not a mistake. You are not just here on earth to just come and live and go. You are here to fulfill a mandate of God. I will go on. Let's see. I wrote here, there is a written plan of God over everything and everyone. There's a written plan of God over everything. Can you imagine when the Israelites got to the junction of the Red Sea? They were shocked that God was not shocked. They were surprised that God did not see anything. You know why? God had everything in plan. So when Moses said, Lord, God said, why are you looking up to me? What's that in your hand? Which means God had prepared ahead. Israel will go through this path. There was an already made plan of God for them. So when he stretched his rod, he saw that the river divided. There was a road already. So I want you to say after me, there's a plan of God over my life. And it will not fail in Jesus' name. I didn't hear you. Jeremiah 29, 11 shows us that the plan of God over everyone is good. No one was planned by God for anything negative. Look at Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. See the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you what? An expected end. So, everyone created by God, everyone that God allowed to come to the earth, God has a written plan for, and understand this, there is none that there is a negative written plan for. No, there is none. There's nothing like that in destiny. The destiny that God has written. I want you to concentrate. Open your ears. We are looking at the word, the, 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 the subject destiny from the life of Jacob. There's nothing like, okay, okay, you know what? You know what? He wants here, Boshin Loli Aye, you. But you know, as we watch it in the Yoruba movies, he wants here, Boshin Loli Aye, you, Boshin Loli Aye, you, There's nothing like, uh, uh, because some of you are eating, whoa, eating, whoa, killing with Yoruba movie, no? Eh? African magic, they be quay, eh, tea, monk, what's the Bible, someone? And we are killing, eh, yeah, eh, yeah, long, contain, we are me, you know, you know, do you know that there's, there are still Christians that think like that? But look at Jeremiah. Show us that Jeremiah 29, 11. Yes, there is destiny. But the destiny that God has for everyone is this. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. See the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Yes, there is written plan of God over every man's life. But the plan that God has written is good. There is no failure in God's plan. Let's go to another question. Does it mean that everyone struggling or that died early in life were part of destiny that God has written? At least I, could remember, I can remember when I was in secondary school, about two of my friends or three died in our secondary school. We had one in Mecca, was one of my was my best friend. He died when we were in GSS3. We had one Owo Labi. He was my classmate. He died when we were in GSS. No, was GSS1. There's another one too that died. I think when we were in SS2. So, the question I want us to answer, because some of you are bothered. Okay, Pastor, Pastor, why is it that some people are struggling? Why is it that some people died early? Why is it that some people are not great at all? Why is it that some people's life is not even good? Why some people's life is doing well? Why? This is what I discovered. 
Are you here with me? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Beloved, it is important you know that destiny is not automatic. It's not like a washing machine where you put your soap, you put your water, you put your clothes, and you just time it. You know that's automatic. Nothing can stop it except if they take the light. But if they don't take, take, take the light and the, the weight you are putting into your washing machine is not stronger than what the machine can carry, it will use the time. Destiny is not like that. We need to recall what they call will they change? Destiny is not like that. Are you here with me? Destiny is not automatic. But I will explain. It does not have the power. Destiny does not have the power to fulfill itself. What the devil does to get people's destiny aborted is to capitalize, hear me, on careless openings, which I'm going to show you. What the devil does to get people's destiny aborted is to capitalize on what? Careless openings, which I'm going to show you. Let's look at some of them. See these examples. The first stage of the devil's attack on people's destiny comes through carelessness on the part of the parents of destiny carriers. I come again. Some people are writing. The first stage of the devil's attack on people's destiny comes through the carelessness on the part of the parents of destiny carriers. Now, let me show you Matthew chapter 2 from verse 13. Let's look at something. The devil does not have power over your destiny, but what he does is to capitalize on careless openings. And the first stage of his attack is on the carelessness of the parents of destiny carriers. Let's see. Matthew chapter 2 from verse 13. Let's be quick about it. We don't have all the time. We still have to take the communion. We still have to pray. Matthew chapter 2 from verse 13. Now, let's look at this scripture together. Are you set? Now, the Bible says, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to who? To Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise. Let me have somebody that can be a Joseph in this meeting. Uh, uh, please, Daddy Twins, come. Arise. Take the young child and his mother. Please come beside me here. And do what? And flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Wait for me with this scripture. Because we have to read it uh, more. Come sir. This is, let's take this as Joseph. He has a son. His name is Jesus. Now who is Jesus? Jesus is supposed to be the deliverer of the world. Abi? Yeah. yeah. The savior of the world. He came with the savior's, Messiah's destiny. Just like so many of us are raised by God to be the Messiah of our, of our families. At the, age that, at the age that baby Jesus was, hear me, Jesus could not defend himself. The day he was born was the day his star was seen. He couldn't defend himself. And somebody saw his stand. They say, ah, Omotobiye, Irawolugo, the star of that child is so great. Oh, that child is so great. What do we do? Look for him for me. We have to stop him. They wanted to stop him. God could not save Jesus at that point because he was under the care of his what? Parents. So what did God do? He had to speak to who? Joseph. But let me ask you a question. What if Joseph didn't know God? Sir? Jesus, we died. He would die like that. Can you see that? The parents have a role to play. I was speaking with one young lady. He has, uh, he has mental disorder. Once in a while, he comes, she comes to normal and she comes to church here to beg for arms. You know? And when she's normal, she just come. One day, she, in a normal state, she just entered and said, Pastor, and I'm hungry. So I gave her gala. I gave her some, something to drink. While she was eating and drinking, he said, Me, the riba, I tell you. I was not like this before. This was not how they gave me. But my mom and I were living in Kaduna, and my mom left me with our neighbor. And she traveled to the market. She said she was going to the market to go and buy something. He said, And I remember very well. I remember very well. My neighbor, our neighbor used blade 
to scrape my hair and say some things. He said, from that day, I didn't used to remember anything again. So, which means the safety of Jesus as a baby was hanging on what? Joseph. The carefulness of Joseph. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Now, I'm showing you how they are both destinies. Mistake of parents is what the devil capitalized on first. And you know, there are so many parents like that. They may be living on house number four. And their child is, house, is at house number 18. He went to play ball at house number 19. Look at how many houses, how many blocks <laughs> away. 15 blocks away. So they will have to be looking for, let me look for a name that we don't have in our mix here. We don't have, I think we don't have baby Mike here. Mike! 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 And from the story of Jesus, documentary story, we see, we, we, we saw it clearly that it is possible for you to recognize a glory carrier by the reading of stats. Anyone that practices astrology does not need to go far. Does not even need to sleep. I met one astrologian like that. I went for evangelism and I met him. As we're talking, he said, tell me your month and I'll tell you your stars. I'll tell you who you are. As we're talking, so we started, I started preaching to him. He was trying to bring me to the Bible. I took him to the Bible. He was trying to go through astro astrology. I took him to astrology because I've read a lot of all these things. He got to a point, he looked at me and said, young man, you are, you are well read. I said, you can't deceive me. you know that he told me some things about myself because he, he only asked me what's your month what's your date he told me some things about myself that me myself know so don't forget destiny is real i've told you but destiny is not automatic now how do the, does the devil abort people's destiny is what I, we are treating now the first thing is that he capitalizes on the word carelessness of parents of glory carriers. Can you imagine if somebody like Joseph was number one, blind or sluggish? You know there are some sluggish people. Stand up now, carry this child. We'll go next week. Let's look at, let's read on. See what happened to other children. Let's go on, let's go on. Matthew 2, 13. Matthew 2, 13. We've taken 13. Now show us 14. Now listen, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night. You know what? Let me speak to all the men. Hold on here. That's why all our husbands, all the men, please be spiritual. That's why I see all our ladies, don't, don't say yes, I do, to a man that is not born again. A man that is not sensitive to the leading of the spirit of God. You know why? Because husbands are the men at the gate. They determine what enters the family. So he arose. Let's move on fast, fast, fast. We have a lot of scriptures to still read. He arose. He took the young child and his mother by night. And departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Move on, move on, move on, move on. I want to show us something. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was what? Exceedingly wrought and sent forth and slew all the children. Look at the children that were, that were slain this particular day. Do you want to tell me that that was their destiny? Is that what God wrote for them? Answer me now. But their own parents could not be. I come again. Their own parents could not see. He slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. In all the coast thereof. From two years old and under. He would just enter into families. What's the age of this child? If they say two years, kill him. Kill him. Kill him. 
in the whole of Bethlehem. Is Mr. Ojo here? Why? Because their parents were careless. That's why when God begins to speak to you about the destiny of the child of your children, hear me, you have to shine your eyes. And I'm not only talking to the children now. Some of you are wondering what has been happening to my life. Some of you, your parents made some careless mistakes. But in this service, there shall be restoration. I said the Lord will restore whatsoever has been affected in your destiny in the name of Jesus. Beloved, at that stage, Jesus needed parental help. When parents fail, hear me. When parents fail in their responsibility, the child are the ones, the children are the ones that suffer. When parents fail in their responsibility, it is the children that suffer it. That's why you see a man of great destiny. And it will be a great one. But because his father, his mother failed in his responsibility. When he was supposed to be going to school, he was laboring. And now that he's trying to labor to stand for himself, he's the one trying to labor to distribute out of the little he has to his parents, to his brothers and sisters. How does he want to be balanced? If not for divine restoration. restoration. Say destiny. I didn't hear you. Say destiny. Want me to choose one? Please help daddy. They say they with Debola. Just carry him and put him by your side so that he can concentrate. I make sure he does not stand from that place. Carry him. The worst he can do is to cry. Come back to our message. Listen. See how Hannah contributed great effort to help her son Samuel fulfill his divine purpose. Let's go to 1 Samuel 22. Uh, sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 1, 22 to 28. Now, look at the contribution of Hannah. 1 Samuel chapter 1, 22. Let's, let's, let's read now. But Anna went not up, for she said to her husband, I will not go up until the child is weaned, and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. He had told him, this is the destiny of my son. And Elikana, her husband, said unto her, do what seemeth them good. Tarry unto thou unto Sorry, tarry until thou have weaned him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son sock until she weaned him. We stop at 28. Next verse. Next verse. 24. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her and with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine. And brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. She was helping him to fulfill, to bring him into destiny. That's why I'm praying for somebody under the sound of my voice. May the Lord compensate you for all the mistakes of your parents that has affected you in any way. In the name of Jesus. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her. And we have taken this 25. 25. 25. 25. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli, 26. And she said, Oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord, 27. For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked of him, 28. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. Now look up. Can you imagine if Hannah did not play her role? Samuel would not have been in record today. Now, can you see that parents contribute if you are going to what? Fulfill your destiny. The carelessness of many parents is the reason several destinies have been tampered with. People who have, uh, uh, who have believing parents don't know 
what they have. You know, those of you who your daddy and your mommy are born again. You don't know what you have. Especially those of you who your daddy and mommy are pastors. You don't know what you have. Ah, we, he, as up till this morning, I was seeing the presence of God. Lord, 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 in the name of Jesus. Lord, 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 Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? She won't come with big one. Why? You are not going to be a dead. I want my mother to be born again. One day she's okay and he said, "He leave me my look, my only my fat colors. I get a band of money. Go away, I get away. Cool it down, go. Oh, 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 when I meet some great servants of God that are more anointed than me, I sow seed in the name of my children. You know why all these things are doing? They are softening the grounds for them. Now, can you now imagine eh, parents who are committing crime outside and people are causing their generation? Am I communicating? I will fulfill purpose. I'm only showing you the things that affected so many people's destiny. Now, let's move on to the next point. The devil, now the second one, we are true with parents. The devil also capitalizes on the error of destiny carriers themselves. How? Listen. A, until you encounter salvation, you can't align to fulfill purpose. Do you know that if you are not born again, you can't fulfill the purpose of God for your life? Because the purpose of God for your life starts at salvation. When you get born again, that's when you have the touchlight to see where God is say, what God is saying. So if you don't know that, the more you walk in sin, the more you walk far away from the purpose of God for your life. Now look at this, Acts of Apostles chapter 9. 5 to 7. Acts 9. 5 to 7. Let's see something here. Acts 9. 5 to 7. So many that refuse salvation do not know that they are throwing away their access to purpose. Look at this. 9. 5 to 7. And he said, that was the encounter of Saul that became Paul. And he said, who art thou, Lord? Can you see? The first thing was to meet Jesus. And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Whom thou persecuted, it was when I gave my life to Christ, I became born again. Hear me, I discovered the purpose of God for my life. Look up. I want to tell you something. Every one of us has a call. But hear me. Our own calling, all of us are not called to be pastors in church. But we all are called to win souls. But win souls in different aspects. Some of you are called into politics. When you get into politics, you, your life reflects Christ. People are coming to Jesus because of you. Some of you are called into banking sector. Why you are there, you know, managing finances, your life and your attitude will be attracting people. Some of you are called into hospitality. Hospitality is all this entertainment or, you know, telling or whatever. You have, that's where God has planted you. That's why we call people like that the marketplace pastors. Some of you are called into education. You have schools. But in the school, your light is reflecting. But while you are doing that, you are working on those children too. While they are in school, you are teaching them the principles of, of salvation. Am I communicating? So we all have call. But hear me, we cannot 
find our calling until we find Christ, Christ first, until we are born again. So Paul, the apostle, look up, look up, show me that scripture, show me that scripture. I don't have the time. And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. I am Jesus. So he met Jesus. Next verse, verse 6. Can you see that it is not assignments that came first? And he was trembling and astonished and said, Lord, can you see assignment next? What will thou have me to do? It was not to do that started first. It was who had thou. Jesus now revealed himself. Thank you. Hear me. Until you are, okay. That's the first one, salvation. Until you have encounter of salvation, you can't align to fulfill purpose. What's the next thing? Until you are ready to pursue tirelessly, you may not access your destiny. Sherry, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. I want to share it. Tireless pursuit. Do you think Rome is built in a day? Rome is not built in a day. You don't get destiny accomplished overnight. It is tireless pursuit. I come again. Tireless. You don't give up. The devil will be trying to block your way because he knows that that's your pathway to greatness. That's what God has called you into. So he will, he will be trying to block your way. He will be trying to block. But you don't give up. He be giving up. Let me meet inside your man. Is somebody here with me? I wrote here. The reason is because there is always a contrary wind that does not want you to fulfill purpose. There is this contrary wind that wants to push you back. Once you find purpose, it doesn't want you to fulfill purpose. Now, can I let me tell you this truth? I was sharing somewhere. Now, hear me. My marriage is going to be 20, 22 years. We've had ser several challenges in our marriage. Oh. We've had several misunderstandings in our marriage. But you know what? Whenever we have misunderstanding, and I'll go and sit down, the first thing the devil wants you to think of because whenever we hear that word, the will of God, we think it is two perfect people, hello, coming together. Hello? You didn't hear me. <sighs> so, people now believe that when they say something is the will of God, you won't have misunderstanding. When they say something is the will of God, you won't have challenges. So, whenever I sit down, I say, I, I want to ask myself, ah, are you sure this is the will of God? You know what I used to tell myself? The same voice I had that called me into ministry is the same voice I had when I chose my wife. So if I didn't hear well about my wife, it means I didn't hear well about my calling. So I always tell my, I'm so sure of what I had. So it is, not, it is for me to now fix my marriage. And that, is, that has been what has kept me for 22 years. God said to David, look up, pursue. You will overcome. I mean, you will overtake. And you will what? Recover. But did God tell David that he will fight from morning till evening the next day? Will of God, no man lead you. You know, the, the way that prophecy came, pursue, you overcome. And surely without doubt, they cover all. You think it's, as, it's like a, a sponge cake. You know, the sponge cake is the easiest cake to eat. It's like it's boneless. It's not, it's not hard at all. You take it, it's like you're eating um, a cheese ball. In fact, cheese ball is harder than sponge cake. But the Bible says he was swinging the sword. He was from that evening till the next evening. Ah, oh, she was That's what somebody said. Ah, look, she was. She was no longer come and lay one. Demaba one. Demaba recover all. 
se mo ki mentality yen ni opolopo mo olorun ngbe lati fi dojuko pe ki ayan ma won le se so to ma ti wa de bi kan ah o ti leju o to ba ti leju an to ba ti le yo gere lo mi ki nje a kan turn back esa winners chapel that is reading today when i had bishop oyedepo talk about him receiving a, a light revelation 1974 i was not born in 1974 he said i saw it in 1994 in 1974 that i will not i will not have people i saw it in 19, 1974 76 not shebe me i saw it he said, i saw the light in 1974 do you know their struggles do you know what they have gone through? Don't doubt your destiny because of challenges. You have to be tireless in your pursuit. Ah, uh, I've told you here before. We got married. Before we got married, God told me, son, I'm blessing you with children. How many do you want? At first, I said four. But I remember that I made one promise when I was a youth. I was listening to Pastor Adeboe's preaching and he was talking about his commitment to motherless homes. That he decided to have seven children, but he told God that God, maybe I'll uh, let me stop at is it five or six? I'll stop at five. Wait, message moon, so I'll take well. I'm talking about 1990. That should be 1991. I had that message on 90. He said he now said, Lord, okay, okay, you know what? I will I will not give back to this number of children. I will spare, I will stop at I will remain one. That one I'll be using to adopt. And as a young born again Christian, 1993. I knelt down in front of the TV and I said, Lord, I wanted two boys and two girls when I get married. Look at my age in 1993. Mathematicians calculated for me. 19, hmm? Are you sure? Huh? 1993. 30 bitibo. Ah, no, 93. It cannot be 30. From 1975. Uh, wait, I was born 1976. Uh, 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 is how many? It's not 30 years. Uh, 1993, the moon calculates by. 17 years, 30, 30 years. 19 <laughs> calculate you are calculating something yes <laughs> so how how old was i then not till date now 70 to 93 how old was i 1973 1993 17 years abby and i knelt there in front of the tv and said lord i give you one i will have two girls and a boy the space of the fourth child I will used to be a blessing to the needy. And God said, I will give you. Beloved, three years after my marriage, I are more. But we didn't give up. Destiny is not automatic. You have to be tireless in your pursuit. I am so sure what God has said to me concerning my calling will happen. I am so sure. I may still be at the pruning stage. Because I saw it. I saw myself preaching in one of the visions I saw. I will tell you so many, so, some things on Revelation tomorrow. And I saw thousands of legs trooping towards my direction. That we want to hear him speak. Thousands of people were running towards me. And I woke up. Destiny is real, but it is not automatic. Is somebody here with me? Listen, you have to pursue what God has shown you about yourself tirelessly. You have to pursue what God has shown you about yourself tirelessly. Lack, lack city is the devil's trick to make you back out of purpose. Laxity. 
If God promised you that your children are going to be great, yes, I'm giving you children that are going to be excellent academically. Instantly, everything they teach them in school, they will begin, they will just begin to know. No, that vision in your mind is the reason why you want to give them, get them extra lesson teacher. That vision in your mind is the reason why you want to say, okay, no, these children need extra, extra lesson. That vision is the reason why you say, no, these children, I need to keep paying for their school fee. Am I communicating? But some of you just think that once God has spoken it, it will just happen like that. You don't need to do anything about it. Just leave it like that. He has done it. Listen, every prophecy you receive that you do not think about will remain as it is. Prophecy. For prophecy to become manifestation. Beloved, what should you do? You put in effort. I was listening to one man of God yesterday. I was listening to his message, you know, to build my own spiritual life. And the man of God was talking about healing ministry. Look up. He was talking about miracle ministry. He said, do you know that miracle ministry does not start with miracle? It starts from knowledge. He said, go look for a servant of God that, is, that God is using in the miracle ministry. Learn from him. He said, while you learn, you learn, you learn. Go and practice what you have learned. He said, when you practice, you don't get the results. Go back to, learn, to knowledge. Go back to learn. Then you learn small. You come back and practice. When you practice, you are not getting results. Go back to knowledge. He said, you keep going back to knowledge until what you are practicing becomes what you have been seeing. So this night, the prayer I want us to pray, I want you to speak your destiny to manifestation. What you have spoken concerning me, I call it. I do what? I call it. Everybody be, be on your feet. Sagada Are you are you ready? See after me, say, oh God, I didn't hear you. You can do better. By your mercy, please compensate me with the good things. With good things, sorry. With good things for all the errors of my parents over my destiny. Let's come again. Say, oh God, by your mercy, please compensate me with good things for all the errors of my parents over my destiny in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Lord, compensate me for all the errors of my parents over my destiny in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Lord, please compensate me. Basada. Begin to ask for divine compensation now. Ask for divine compensation now. Lord, for all the mistakes of my parents over my destiny in the name of Jesus. Lord, compensate me. King of kings, compensate me. Asian of days, compensate me. Mighty in battle, compensate me, O oh God. Begin to pray. For the mistakes of my parents. Lord, please compensate me. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Are you praying right now? Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed and amen. Quickly take number two. I'm only taking five. Then we take the communion and close for tonight. So after me, say, oh God, by your mercy, please compensate me with good things in all the areas I have been careless with my destiny. Yeah. In all the areas you have been careless, you are going to pray for divine compensation. I know some of you, when you look back at times, you say, ah, ah, mistake. So, so, and so, yeah. And you know some of these costly mistakes, you've not been able to gain them back. But do you know that we serve a God? In his word he said, I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm has eaten. Do you think we as leaders who don't make mistakes? We make mistakes. We make careless decisions at times. Ah, ah, that decision we made was what affected that person and made that person to leave church. In our closet, we may not come out to tell you that ah, ah, that mistake is my mistake. Oh. We know that we made the mistake. We go to God, Lord, Lord. And at times you see God replacing with much better people. We are going to pray for yourself. Say, oh God, I didn't hear you. By your mercy, 
please compensate me with good things in all areas i have been careless with my destiny in the name of jesus begin to pray for yourself right now begin to pray for yourself in the name of jesus compensate me lord with good things in all the areas i've been careless with my destiny begin to pray in all the areas i have been careless with my destiny oh god father compensate me with good things begin to pray begin to talk to the lord begin to ask for divine compensation right now father compensate me lord with good things oh god in all the areas i've been careless with my destiny in the name of jesus now pray for your children as well in all the areas i've been careless with the destiny of my children father please we ask for compensation father compensate me by your mercy oh god in the name of jesus are you praying for yourself 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 thank you father in jesus name we have prayed and amen now take number number four three quickly you say holy spirit my comforter my helper please reorganize my life put me on the pathway of destiny again put me on the pathway of destiny again lift up your voice and begin to pray begin to pray the holy spirit is our comforter the holy spirit is our helper begin to pray holy spirit my helper my comforter please reorganize my life please put me on the pathway of destiny again in the name of jesus begin to pray holy spirit put me on the pathway of destiny again in the name of jesus are you praying for yourself 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 holy spirit put me on the pathway of destiny again thank you father in jesus name we have prayed and amen then take the last one for tonight you will say oh god by your mercy let my destiny begin to manifest begin to manifest lift up your voice and begin to pray that's the last prayer for tonight oh god by your mercy let my destiny begin to manifest and your mom or begin to manifest in the name of jesus Lord, let my destiny begin to manifest. 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 Let my destiny, or your destiny, I call you, begin to manifest. What God has written concerning me. Come on! Begin to manifest. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to declare right now. Oh, until your Lord will not be able to share. And your mom will not be able to share. And your mom will not be able Thank you, Father. I give you all the glory. Begin to thank the Lord for answer to prayers tonight. Begin to thank God for answer to prayers tonight. Begin to thank the Lord for answer to prayers tonight. Lay my mama say, Lord, I thank you. King of kings, I worship you. Thank you for answer to prayers. As she... Yes, Lord, he be thirty bere. Lie me, oh, he be thirty bere. Let me hear your voice. I do, be oh, Jesus. From be ten, mummy, Lord, he she, oh. Let me hear your voice. Let me For the last time, let's go now. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for answer to prayers in the name of Jesus. Lord, as part of this service, I bless the bread, I bless the drink today in the name of Jesus. And I declare, O oh God, Father, that the blessing.